Imagine a place so cold that your breath freezes before it leaves your mouth, and all you can see for miles on end is snow and ice. If you think your winter months are freezing, imagine staying in temperatures of negative 64 degrees Celsius every day. For centuries, the Inuit have thrived with no heaters, no electricity, just pure Arctic ingenuity. So how do they prepare for the coldest nights without modern tech? First, the fortress, which is the igloo. But this isn't just any snow hut. This is a self-heating, windproof survival pod that protects the Inuit from the coldest nights. And the Inuit can build one in just two hours. In the Arctic, fluffy snow is a horrible insulator, and it's only good for snow angels and bad decisions. The Inuit look for compressed snow, which traps the air in and offers instant insulation. With a razor-sharp snow knife and elbow grease, each block is cut with tapered edges, so they lean forward. Gravity does all the heavy lifting, as the blocks are stacked in a spiral with the top angled inward to form the dome. The spiral turns the igloo into a self-supporting dome. No pillars, no beams, just pure snow engineering. Curved surfaces distribute weight evenly, and the smaller blocks are placed on top for less weight. Want to find out if an igloo has been built perfectly? Stand on top of it. A well-built igloo can handle a human standing on it without getting a single crack. Since an igloo is curved, it disregards all the cold winds at negative 64 degrees Celsius. Wind simply goes around it. Talk about unbothered. But you might be wondering how igloos protect the Inuit from winter when it's a house made of snow. Well, igloos don't make heat, but they trap it. Your body is the furnace making snow the best insulation for this place. Once humans are inside the igloo, the structure traps the body heat generated by all the occupants, creating a warm environment. And an in Inuit cheat code? Light a lamp, and the heat will glaze the walls into an ice shell. This makes your igloo windproof and stronger. Step inside an igloo and you'll see the real genius. The igloo is a temperature-controlled survival machine that has kept the Inuit warm for centuries. When the outside hits negative 64 degrees Celsius, inside the igloo can be a life-saving negative 7 degrees Celsius. This is a 57 degree difference, without a single watt of electricity. An important rule of igloo science is that cold air is heavy, so the entrance isn't just a door, it's a cold sink. A low tunnel will force freezing air to pool at the bottom, while the warm air stays on top. Think of it like a heat moat. Keep the icy drafts at bay while you chill in your warm snow palace. The Inuit noticed how heat rises, which is why they didn't sleep at the bottom of the igloo. In fact, the igloo is divided into three layers, and the Inuit sleep on top, right at the warmest air pocket. This is genius because the warmest air stays at head height. For their bedding, they use caribou fur and hides, providing a soft and comfortable platform for them to sleep. This also has an R value of 40, more than enough to provide warmth and insulation. If you've noticed the small hole in the ceiling of an igloo, that's not a skylight for stargazing. It's a life-saving vent, as nothing can ruin a good nap like suffocating in your own breath. Inuit add a small hole on top of their igloos to prevent the deadly buildup of carbon dioxide, and also lets out humid air. That way, the residents won't end up with frozen sweat on their bodies. The Inuit also add a lower level entrance, which is the little tunnel that you can see in the front of an igloo. This prevents cold air from entering and protects the Inuit from freezing over. Forget IKEA. Inuit furniture is carved from snow and upholstered in caribou fur. They cover their sleeping platform with willow twigs and caribou or seal fur for insulation and comfort, while a sealskin flap is hung over the entrance to keep drafts away. Your $500 tent can't compete with a snow dome that's windproof, self-heating, and literally gets stronger in a storm. Would you survive a negative 64 degrees Celsius night in the Arctic? Drop a snowflake if you'd like to try, or let us know if you'll last only five minutes in the comments. The Inuit don't only rely on their igloos to survive the coldest nights. 
they have something very important. Winter outfits that are so advanced, it puts NASA insulation to shame. Start with the parka, nature's heated jacket. This is the Arctic's answer to survival fashion. Made with caribou or seal skin, the parkas can trap heat like a thermos, way warmer than wool. When the Inuit wear their parka, they have the inner fur in and the outer fur out, creating a toasty air pocket. It's also a self-regulating outfit that keeps them warm on the coldest day. Whether it's rain or snow, the Inuit figured out how to navigate this with seal skin. They created waterproof outer layers from seal intestines. Yes, intestines. Would you mind wearing a coat made of seal intestines? Let us know in the comments. Even Inuit pants are made from animal hides, often caribou or seal. As these are durable and water resistant, they provide a lot of warmth in the cold Arctic climate. The secret to the Inuit keeping warm? Layering. Inuit clothing is often worn in layers. The inner layer has the fur facing inwards and the outer layer has the fur facing outwards. This traps a layer of insulating air between the layers. It's like a personal igloo you can wear anywhere. Forget heated insoles. Inuit boots, called comics, are waterproof sealskin shoes stuffed with dried grass. Even when walking through the snow, the feet stay warm and bone dry. The shoes come with flexible soles that move silently on ice, and the grass lining wicks moisture, since sweat can lead to ice. Inuit wear mittens that are literally anti-snow magnets. They are made of caribou or seal skin and will keep their hands warm and protected from the cold. The mittens are designed with a dual layer, and thin liners are under the mitts so they can move their fingers without frostbite. Even the food that the Inuit eat is carefully designed to keep them warm in the freezing Arctic weather. While we count calories, the Inuit are out there eating 3,000 calorie meals. This is not to get ripped, but to stay warm. This is the ultimate survival diet. They prefer eating high-fat, high-protein foods with a strong focus on meat and seafood. But there's no whole foods or farmer's markets in the Arctic. It's just the Inuits, their harpoons, and their sharp knives. The shopping list consists of seals, whale blubber, and fish. There's no need for supplements as the Inuit get everything they need from what they hunt. Seal blubber is another essential food for the Inuit, a key source of fat and energy. It keeps them strong and warm. And it's not just fat, it's Arctic jet fuel. It offers a lot of vitamin D and omega-3s. So even with no sun, for months, the Inuit are still protected. Could you eat raw food for days? That's just another day in the life of an Inuit. The Inuit go raw not because of the trends, but because cooking it will destroy the nutrients they need to survive. Inuit believe that eating raw meat will help them stay warmer and stronger. The Inuit also eat fermented meat and fish. It's like Arctic kimchi, gut healthy and packed with calories. They even have foods like seal stuffed seabirds that are allowed to ferment for months. It's gut healthy and packed with calories keeping them warm. You might notice the Inuit eating powerhouse foods, as these are the most nutrient-dense parts of an animal. They enjoy liver, brains, and eyes from different animals. It's the best way to provide them with enough calories. In the Arctic, eating is survival, and the only way to keep them warm and insulated. You might not even be able to move under a blanket at negative 10 degrees Celsius, but the Inuit are out there doing squats in negative 60 degrees Celsius like it's nothing. In the Arctic, movement isn't fitness, but it's survival. Your body is a furnace, and every movement can increase the heat. Every toe wiggle, knee bend, and shoulder roll creates heat through thermogenesis. The Inuit have mastered this and keep themselves moving even when they're in an igloo. They focus on physical activity to stay warm and reverse signs of hypothermia. With constant movement, they can prevent cold-related injuries like frostbite, which can be deadly in the Arctic. In the Arctic, they have a rule, which is to never sit still. Even when resting, the Inuit never stop moving. They pace, fidget, carve, and more. 
keeping their bodies warm and heated even on the coldest nights. When the Inuit find hypothermia setting in, or someone in the community is showing signs of cold-related stress, like slurred speech and clumsiness, it's time to wrestle. This might sound like a joke, but they actually start engaging themselves in immediate physical activity, sometimes even wrestling, to restore the warmth. Moving around is no problem for the Inuit, as they often find themselves exercising, whether they are hunting, dragging heavy prey, kayak paddling, fishing, trekking miles in deep snow, and more. Even your gym bro does not exercise as much as the Inuit do. No electricity? No problem. The Inuit hacked winter nights for thousands of years with the Kelik, keeping them warm without any power. The Kelik is authentic Arctic tech that acts as a heater, nightlight, stove, and air quality monitor. The fuel was seal oil, which burns slowly and hot. As for the wick, it was Arctic moss or cotton. This could create an environment of negative 1 degree Celsius inside an igloo, a major boost when you consider that it's as cold as negative 64 degrees Celsius outdoors. The magic behind seal oil lamps? Controlled burns. The wick soaks up oil like a sponge, releasing steady heat without affecting the house. They can adjust the flame to boil water and cook meat. Here's the kicker. The Kelic improves your igloo. The heat melts the inner walls just enough to refreeze into an ice shield. It's stronger, windproof, and warmer. As the heat warms up the interior of the igloo, the Arctic environment will cause it to freeze again. The Inuit reads smoke like a weather forecast using their seal oil lamps. If the smoke from the lamp is going straight up, that means it offers a good airflow. But if it's lingering, the vent is blocked. You might be wondering, why doesn't a lamp melt the igloo? Well, the Inuit don't have large fireplaces, only small lamps with low heat output. The snow acts as an insulation, absorbing excess heat. While you fight over blankets at home, the Inuit turn sharing a bed into a survival strategy. Their ultimate sleep hack to avoid frostbite while in bed is to never sleep alone. The Inuit run on shared body heat, as each human can produce up to 100 watts. With two people, there's twice the warmth. If the igloo is smaller, it makes it even warmer for all the residents in it. With the sleeping buddy system, the partners can help each other spot numb fingers before they freeze. Guess in the Arctic, cuddling saves lives. Caribou is nature-made breathable fabric. Its hair pumps sweat away so fast that it never gets a chance to freeze. After all, it would be uncomfortable to have your sweat frozen to your body. The fur side in wicks moisture from the skin, while the fur side out will block wind like a fortress. But here's the Arctic's cruel joke. Your own breath can kill you. If you exhale wrong, you'll wake up in a personal ice cave. The Inuit have fixed this with a ventilation hole that allows moisture to escape instead of leaving their furs in ice. Also, they sleep with their face outside the covers. Let's be real. The Inuit invented winter camping. With the buddy system, they can stay warm all night. Could you survive an Arctic night sharing a bed? Let us know your thoughts. Forget checking your phone first thing in the morning. In the Arctic, your morning routine includes counting all of your toes to make sure none of them have frozen off. Once they wake up, they wiggle their toes and engage in slow rolls so that their muscles can wake up the blood flow. This allows them to test circulation before exposing their skin. They also have to check for the symptoms of frostbite when they wake up. They check their ears, noses, and toes and rewarm slowly. Early detection will prevent permanent damage in the future. Body heat is the best way for them to keep warm in the Arctic. To keep the lamp running all day long, the Inuit have to even wake up at night to trim the moss wick and add seal oil to it. It also allows them to monitor the air quality, keeping them warm all day and night. In Inuit culture, the woman is always in charge of tending to the lamp. If the lamp is properly tended, it can keep an igloo warm for up to 16 hours a day. 
There is no oatmeal in the Arctic. Their breakfast was 3,000 calories of raw blubber, keeping them warm from the inside. After all, you can't survive in the Arctic on granola. Forget checking your stocks app. In the Arctic, the first order of business in the community is a food audit. Because they can't run to the store and no one wants to hunt every day, Inuit get everything they need from the environment. As seals can offer meat for food and oil for the lamp, if there's no catch, whether it's fish or meat, then that means no food, no fur for clothes, bedding, or furniture, and even no oil for their lamp. Everything would be cold and empty in their igloos. In Inuit communities, there's no me. They practice nikilari, which means those who share food. Greed is not just rude in these communities, but it's genocide. Only by sharing all the resources with each other can they prevent hunger and cold. The Inuit also keep reserves for blizzard stores, as this is what would feed their families when it's impossible to go outside and hunt. Compared to how the Inuit prepare for the coldest nights, your emergency kit is a joke. Modern survivalists obsess over gear, but the Inuit have the ultimate weapon, which is unshakable mental grit. They focus on teamwork and humor, especially in an environment where it's always freezing. Laughter is a stress relief in this place where stress kills. What's more, the Inuit don't panic. They carefully analyze their environment without falling into traps. If a blizzard is coming, they can predict it and reinforce the igloo on time. If they can't catch any seals, they adapt with other alternatives. The hunters don't have any satellite, compass, or GPS. They just have a good memory and knowledge of the terrain, easily handling the terrain. How can anyone navigate endless stretches of snow and ice? The Inuit hunters do this effortlessly. No heaters, no synthetic gear, just wisdom passed down through generations. The Inuit don't just fight the cold, but they work with it. So could you handle a night at negative 64 degrees Celsius? Drop your thoughts in the comments if you'd like to try it, or tag someone who'd only last five minutes. Thanks again for watching, and subscribe for more extreme Inuit stories.